<laughs> That's what I wanted. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, so I got a quick update for you. I just ran home from working on Scrappy. I'm gonna grab some dinner, I'm gonna go back for a few more hours in. But before I dive into this update, <laughs> I've got to tell you a story, and it's why I got to put this line <laughs> at the bottom of my screen. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I got a call from an upset Best Tux customer, and it was really, it's really tough. We have a 24 hour call, seven days a week, to make sure we take good care of our customers. And unfortunately, we got one of those calls. Someone just wasn't happy, displeased, and I was trying to help them through the process of what was wrong with the tug. And as we spent more and more time, it got even more difficult. I'm doing the best I can and he's getting more and more upset because what I'm describing and what he's describing, they are not mixing at all. And uh, I, at one, about 10 minutes into the call, I finally said, uh, what you're telling me does not sound like a problem that's possible in our tug. It just doesn't happen. And, and what you're describing doesn't even sound like a best tug's tug. And he says, no, I'm 100% sure. It's a Best Tux Tug, Mike, I bought from you because I love your Draco videos, your scrappy build. I wanted a product that you made. And I heard it was from your kids, which my kids up here, they work at the factory, so they build tugs with us. And uh, so I, we thought it was. We spent a little more time, come to find out. I said, where did you hear about it? How do you know it's our tug? I swear it's not. And he said, it was simple. It's the ads I watch on your own YouTube channel. And I said, wait, I don't have, I don't put ads on my YouTube channel. YouTube puts ads on my YouTube channel. So we got talking and we found out the problem wasn't a best tug. The problem was he wanted to buy a best tug. Got my competition's ad repeating on my YouTube channels. And he went and bought a tug and thought he had bought a best tug. So we worked it out. We traded him in. We're taking good care of him. Got him a new tug on the way. Um, but I really didn't want this to happen anymore. I called the office to find out if we had any other calls similar to that. Oh, it makes me sick. Apparently it's actually a common call. People calling to figure out how to get service or repair a broken tug. They thought they bought from me and my family and they didn't. So, <laughs> so you know who to call. If those ads show up, they aren't mine. Here's where you can call. I want an opportunity to take care of you, service you, and get you into a tug. Um, and then also, with everything that's going on, with I've been quarantined to my house with my family, out of the shop on Scrappy, but we also just lost the cancellation of Sun and Fun. Very sad day. And we've been building up inventory and stock to take care of customers and do some great specials there. So let me have take this opportunity to pass it on to you. We're giving away free upgrades, free accessories, all kinds of great things. We hope we have an opportunity to earn your business at Best Tugs, the real Best Tugs on this number. Give us a chance. Give us a call. I want to earn your business. Let's get back to work. I'm going to grab some dinner, then back to Scrappy. All right, guys, we drew it by pencil, then converted it to computer. I like to build Scrappy out of scrap parts as much as possible. Here's a scrap chunk of aluminum. Looks like a drug behind a truck right there, but it's enough, just enough to fit the part. And uh, I actually redrew the part a fraction smaller just so we could graze the edges. But uh, this should work perfect. Let's get it cut out. Looks like I wanna clean that up a little more. All right, guys, <laughs> a little selfie footage here. So I've got the control stick. I just made one more pass because it was a little tight to get in. <laughs> that's what I wanted. So that's just a trial fit. I've got a little teeny burr down here. That's just got from the little radius of the tool we used to cut that. I'm going to take that burr off. I'll put a little 45 chamfer on it. So I'm going to load one more tool, make one more pass, and this part will be done. So. All right, guys, we're getting close, so <laughs> it's so cool to just draw something and then cut it. Unfortunately, kind of screwed up a little. 
after getting a part out, I still gotta take the back side off and cut it, flip it over, machine the jaws so that I can clamp it. So I've gotta put this shape in it so I can clamp it. But I noticed after I got it out, I should have put some lightning holes in a couple of these places to just pull a little more weight out. I got way more strength than I need. And this little triangle area here and here and here and here is just added weight I don't need. So when we flip it over, we'll just change the program up, take off all this extra material. And while we got it in there, plunge a few more holes in it, make it a little lighter, but getting close. One little lapse of <laughs> thought, but we'll pull that weight out right now. So back to work. All right, so we just did an analysis by putting the holes in it. We saved almost an ounce. <laughs> it's worth it. We're here already, let's get her done. From the time we drew it, decided I wanted a control lock that could lock the controls with a set pin, drew the part on paper, designed it, drafted it on the computer, cut it out of aluminum, and back in the shop were about four hours. And that's all I've been doing as hard and as fast as I can go. So it's about 10, 15 minutes from being done, and we'll go put it in the airplane. All right, guys, first of several blocks of wood for a new mold for the seat base for Scrappy Cub. I only have a couple hours today, too much work and everything else going on. So I'm trying to knock out a complete mold and part <laughs> in the little time I have. So crossing our fingers, not sure if it's gonna happen, but here's what we're starting with. You can see a bunch of cardboard mesh right here. What you don't, what's hard to see is down inside here is a wood box I made that's got uh, clear tape on it. That box and then this cardboard box is just junk. But when I say junk, <laughs> It's just cardboard hiding the control stick, my control lock, a bunch of parts I made inside there. And now that I've got that control stick protected by just putting a cardboard box over it, then I made the exterior frame of my new seat box for my adjustable seat and for a carbon fiber box that comes up that's part of the seat box that will allow me to put a rubber boot to my control stick and you won't be able to get anything into the control area or see a single cable or any moving parts of the control system inside my cup. So this looks like a mess, but all this is for is to pour foam in it to make a giant foam block, the exact shape I want. Then I'll pull off all the cardboard, the wood frame that's the precise size I want. And then I can sand the edges, round it off, tie everything together in the foam, carbon fiber it, pop the carbon fiber, strip out the foam, add the rest of the layers to the carbon fiber and bag that tight, and then layer, put in some honeycomb, make a strong seat base. Let's get to work. All right, guys, this is the foam I use. It's expanding foam. I don't know, I really get a kick out of using this stuff because it makes really cool parts. So, one to one, makes it really easy. And then when this goes off, <laughs> it's nuts. I got garbage cans on both sides, in case I use too much foam. I gotta collect it so I don't fill my whole plane up with foam. Done it a million times, but every now and then I really screw up. It's starting to go. See the bubbles coming up. Get these tight corners, the rest. I'll push that way.
Well, that's the start of my new seat base and a box to protect my control stick, my control lockout, and a storage box for a little mini cooler under the seat. So I don't know, this should work good. Let's get to work. And so I just masked off this foam with blue tape. Now I'm gonna cover it in clear tape. And once I get it covered in clear tape, I'll cut the seams on these corners and I'll unfold it into a flat sheet. And that's gonna become the template for my carbon fiber so I don't waste it. So when I unfold it, it's gonna get kind of crazy looking, but it's gonna be perfect for a carbon fiber template. So blue tape, then clear tape, there's your template. Then I'm gonna do this exact process over again. Blue tape over the foam, clear tape over the blue. Then I lay my carbon on that, that I cut with the template that's over there. So I'm doing this process twice to do a carbon fiber mold. So let's get to work. So that's a funny shape out of a piece of plastic, the template we made off the seat, or the seat bed. So let's get it on. It's been a really, really long day. <laughs> it might be coming up on morning. I have no idea what time it is, but got the mold done, the foam sanded, carbon fibers in, it's still wet. I still gotta put pill ply on it, so I got another half hour, 45 minutes. But real quick before I do that, I thought I'd tell you what this seat area is for. Not only is it gonna hold the seat that will pivot up on ball bearings and a big rubberized latch with a rubberized pad isolator, so this doesn't have any vibration, but it will, the seat will be able to rock forward. There'll be a giant storage box under here. And then in the front section here, I've got a boot that goes up the control stick. So I finally finished the last of every single location that if you drop rocks or BBs or anything on the floor of this aircraft, they'll be in here forever. They would just roll around because all the new carbon fiber pans I've made go across the floor, up the wall and then the wall panels, which I haven't made yet coming up, will come up and overlap that pan, uh, panel with a rubberized seal, nut plates, and they'll screw together. So there won't be any vibration, but there won't be anywhere that anything could sneak out of the floor area into any part of the airplane at all. And that's part of why I did this seat was to get the controls up and kind of isolate the rest of it. So I'm really excited about it, it went really well, I'm beat. <laughs> It's a long day, but I wanted to get it all the way here in one round, uh, one round, so we succeeded. I'm gonna get some pill ply on it, get a couple hours sleep, we're gonna get back to work. All right guys, I've been sanding and fitting and trimming. <laughs> I'm trying to do all the body work as I go. Um, even on the carbon fiber that I'm just gonna clear coat, we're just working it so that I don't get to the end and have hundreds of hours of sanding to do. So uh, I've been sanding on this, I just wiped it down with water, you can kind of get an idea of how this looks. But you can see here, the 750 touches here, Garmin, Garmin Autopilot, G3Xs. But you can see how this stick has full range of motion and it doesn't hit anything. And that's hooked up to the elevator and everything. What I've got left to do, the seat base is what I've been building. And I've got to put a partition in here. I'm gonna make a storage box here. Another partition here that will become part of the structure for the seat. To, it's actually really strong already, but I'm gonna beef it up a little more where the main seat load is, carries down, and I'll make another access box on the back with a cell phone charger in it for the person in the back seat. So I'll have a storage box here, a storage box under the seat, the control access point, a boot around the stick right here. That officially is the end of all control cables. Every single uh, component that has to do with the controls are invisible at this point. So I'm really happy with how it's turned out how the new machine part worked. Um, a little bit winded, <laughs> if you can't tell, I've been sanding for hours, but uh, I got a lot left in me, so let's go back to work. Okay, I'm really excited. I finally got my center console control stick boot holder bracket done for the carbon fiber pad I just made. So if you take a look at this, the way this works, 
these things, they might look heavy, but I mean, they're not as thin as tinfoil, but they're really, really, really thin. And I've got them designed to fit in here. I'll kind of show you what this is going to do. And then a bigger one here, sealed bottom. Four or five and a couple spares. Those will attach permanently like that. And then this goes on top of the carbon fiber center pod. My control stick comes through here. And what I've got is an ability, there's my holder. When the stick comes through here, I can lean it forward and back. And as I lean it forward, this is my gust lock. So I've got it where I can adjust the torsion so it will never vibrate, extremely solid. And what I can do is I can pivot this back. The control stick will move in between this and I'll simply pull this, push button release out of its holder, and then slide it through the control stick, and it locks all the controls, elevator, aileron, and the stick is locked in the correct position right there. And then this bigger tube right here, I needed a spot for my flashlight, and what I did is I machined it so it would have a wedge fit only at the top so that it wouldn't vibrate. So that thing just drops in. And then while I was at it, I wanted to make sure that it was the right depth that I could drop in Sharpies, pens, highlighter for the map, and put that along the front. So they're always easy to grab right at the front. And then if you look real close, you can see that these are angled on the edges. That's exactly right to have a, a quarter inch clearance around where the stick can't touch it as you move it full control but then there's an undercut lip right here. And that lip is for the leather boot that will tuck underneath this, come up around the stick and tie the, the stick in. So this is the last part I needed to make it so there's no way for anything to get into the belly of my cup. Um, no matter where you are in the plane, if you're in the back seat, front seat, you could literally toss all over the floor a bunch of BBs, they roll around, they couldn't get, get, get out of the cabin area. So this was my last closeout. The backside, I'll pull these off. The backside, you can see where I needed the strength for the control stick lock. I left it thick, but then I pocketed out the rest. And then all these threaded holes are for the seat mount adjustment and the pivot location because my pilot seat will be able to pivot forward to the dash with a cable lockout. So the person in the back can get in and out really easy and not have to work around it. So it's a quick release pivot, front seat, pen holder, flashlight holder, gust lock. So um, this thing weighs just over a pound. What's really cool is it weighs less than carrying around all the components to lock out all your controls. And more importantly for me, uh, a lot of times I go flying and me and my buddies, we land, we think it's going to be dead calm. We think we're only going to go off for an hour or two. And so a lot of people, they don't want that extra weight. So they leave a couple of pounds of all the gust locks at home. They don't take it with them on the trip. Next thing you know, we find a cool spot, we land, we go hiking, we find a waterfall or a stream. A couple hours into the hike, wind starts blowing and nobody's gust locked up, or at least not everybody. So we try and do better, but I thought rather than trying to decide, do I take gust locks or not take gust locks? You should always take your gust locks, <laughs> period. But this is my way to force myself to do it because it's always in the aircraft. Fold the gust lock out of the way, take the pin, drop it in its retainer, ready to go. So that's it, I hope it makes sense. I'm way excited, I'm gonna go put it in the plane, get back to work. This is how this goes in. This will mount right here. Um, it's, it's hard to tell on the video, but I actually traced and modeled my carbon fiber. So this actually has an arc right here and on the front and it's arced on the bottom. So that when I do put this down and I bolt it on permanent, it is already chasing the carbon fiber. This is where this goes. You can see that can move out of the way and go down flat. My control stick, the cables aren't hooked up, but I already, I did it with all the cables for the controls attached. But you can see how the stick moves around. 
If you move the stick clear forward, this will pivot across, and then I'll put in a pass-through uh, hole through the shaft with a, uh, a lug all the way through it, a hole so that the wires can go around it and that this pin never hits it. So I still gotta take this out and put that in, but I, needed to, I need to mount this first, slide it down, mark the holes, and then this will be able to pin right through the control stick. And once that is done, there is no way this thing will be able to move. It is absolutely locked down. So that's gonna be the strongest gust lock I've ever had. So anyway, hope that makes sense. I'm pumped, <laughs> let's get to work.